are two things that I kind of want to talk to you about here. Let me take my headset off in case you can hear some of the stuff because I do have it up kind of loud. Um, so there are two things that I'd like to talk to you about um, right now. Two people, actually. Not things, people. Sorry. It's one of those days. Um, there are two people that I never had the opportunity to meet. And... Um... One of them I knew about before he died, a short time before he died, and one of them I didn't find out about until after he had died. Um, but both of those people have changed my life in a really big way. Uh, so I want to talk to you a little bit about them today. Um, this video will probably go up on my channel. Um, if you are from the vlogs, maybe we'll put a teaser to it and kind of connect it to my channel. Um, so maybe some of you will go to my channel too. Um, anyway, this is something that's really personal and important to me. Um, so I hope I'm not cutting my head off for this. I, I really honestly don't know. Um, I have nothing to kind of prop you up on. Um... So the first person is Pedro Zamora. Um, if you don't know who he is, um, he was an amazing person for many reasons. Um, but let me kind of start at the beginning for me when I first found out about him. Um, I was a little girl and my mother and I would watch shows together and I had an addiction to MTV. My mom would kind of watch with me to kind of make sure that there was nothing too outside the sphere of what I could handle. Um, but I had grown up watching soap operas, so there really wasn't anything on MTV at the time that was beyond what a soap opera would show and what my understanding was already. And I liked the show The Real World because I thought it was really cool that they were taking people that were older than me, that were in this age range that I so wanted to be in, and showing what it was like when you grew up and you, you know, lived with roommates and you were in school and you were doing, you know, these, these things and you were, you know, in, in the real world after you kind of left the nest. And I, I liked that a lot and I wanted to be that. And I would always find a character, you know, a, a person, um, from the show that I identified with the most, you know, if it was the innocent, sweet person or somebody who was a little bit more adventurous and curious or whatever, I would find somebody I identified with. And, um, through watching The Real World San Francisco, I found Pedro Zamora, and it was the first time I had ever really understood what it meant to have HIV. Um, I had to ask my mom what it was, and I had to, you know, kind of listen to the conversation that was going on. And, you know, he was an, a, an educator, and so they would show him, you know, you know, talking about condoms and different things. And these were things that were, you know, before, you know, I hadn't hit puberty yet. Um, but my mom let me watch so that I could learn. Um, and I was so thankful for that because I did learn so much and I was able to learn from him. And if you're going to learn those things from anybody, that's a really great person to learn them from because he was an amazing person and he was so honest and so smart and he just wanted people to be safe and happy and be able to live their lives without being sick or being afraid that it was going to end. And that meant a lot to me. And, um, the president at the time was probably my favorite president that we've had. Um, it was uh, Bill Clinton. And I'm not being all political. I'm not saying this, you know, in terms of you should be in his party or, you know, you should believe in politics or whatever. He was my personal favorite president. And he called him. He called Pedro when he was really sick. And he said, I just want you to know that I'm thinking about you and my prayers are with you. And I just thought... How amazing that was, how extraordinary that this person 
who was not trying to be a superstar, who was just trying to help people help themselves, was making such an impact that the president would call him. And then it was kind of a whirlwind thing. Then he died. And it was the first time in in my life that I felt like somebody I knew had died. And it was funny because I had never met him before. He didn't know my name or my face. But I felt like somebody I knew had died. And the president had said something in the memorial that MTV put together saying because of Pedro so many people could say that they knew somebody who had AIDS and they would understand because of him so many people had the courage to live their lives to the fullest to appreciate the life that they had and to do things that would enable them to be healthy and happy and that left a big impression on me. I mean, you know, I was like 10 and 11 at the time. You know, I hadn't, you know, I hadn't kissed a boy yet. I hadn't gone on a date. I hadn't, you know, I hadn't experienced any of those things that would lead to those decisions, but already I felt like I knew, you know, I knew things and, and I, can understand. So Pedro changed my life without ever meeting me and me ever meeting him. And in his death, I still feel that grief and that pain because he was so important and so special and I wish so much that they could do a reunion thing and then he would be on that screen saying, how happy he was that so many people listened to him and to his story and that all of his hard work and all of the, the negativity that he had to carry and all the pain that he had to go through was worth it. And I just feel so sad that he'll never be the doctor that he wanted to be and that he will never see just how big of an impact his life has had on other people. Um, and the second person whose story, whose life changed mine and I have never met him was uh, Matthew Shepard because it was the first time that I saw pure hate like that. That I felt it like that. Um, I had heard about what had happened, but I didn't really feel it. It happened so many states away, and it, it was this. They made it like this. It was this gay straight issue, and I, I hated that debate, and I hated the whole like thing and I just I removed myself from it and then one day I wasn't feeling well and I stayed home from school and a movie was on and it was a movie about Matthew Shepard and I learned his story and I learned how his life was ended by such horrible hate and I felt the weight of that for the first time. I felt how horrible certain people's could people could really be. And you know, not just to me, because you know, I, I had kind of come to this conclusion, this this very ignorant conclusion, um, and, and kind of self absorbed one that, you know, the only time I was ever going to feel hate or really see it was if it was directed at me personally. And um, that experience 
changed my mind and changed everything for me. Um, my favorite part of that movie was something amazing that um, Matthew's friends did. Um, a certain church that will remain nameless because I don't want to give them more uh, time than they deserve or, you know, publicity. Um, they were picketing and they were saying horrible, hateful things that I won't repeat. But I'm sure that you can imagine. And his friends showed up dressed as angels with angels' wings, and they stood in front of where they were picketing so that nobody could see the signs, so that when the coffin, when the car with the coffin came up, when his parents came up, all they saw were these angels' wings. And not the hateful things that other people were saying. And I thought that was such a beautiful tribute to such a beautiful person who had his whole life ahead of him. And his only mistake was being friendly to the wrong person. And it really hit home that you can be a great, wonderful person. And that there will come a point when other people won't care. And that's a hard lesson to learn. That your niceness can be misinterpreted. And it can hurt you. And that's a horrible thing. And it really kind of shows you how scary the world can be. How someone could hate someone so much that they would hurt them. And that they would take their life like that. And so from that story, from his story, from his life, from hearing his mother speak, I learned a lot about the world and about myself and about the kind of person that I wanted to be. I wanted to be like Pedro. I wanted to be like Matthew Shepard. I wanted to be a good person that tried to help other people in the best way that I could. I wanted to be the kind of person that used my talents to make other people smile, to bring some good into the world, even if that meant that I would have negativity come my way. I wanted to have the courage to be a good person, even when it would be easier not to be. And I still want that, and I still try for that, and I... Sometimes I fail, sometimes I stumble, but I remember that so did they. They were real people. And I may admire them and put them on a bit of a pedestal, but I also remember that they were real people too. I mean, Pedro at one point was arguing over peanut butter on the real world, and it seems like such a stupid thing to argue about. You know, and it seems so ridiculous. But it's, you know, he was human. You know, everybody was human. We all make mistakes. Even the best of us make mistakes. And you can strive to be a better person every single day. And if you make a mistake, okay, dust yourself off and get back up and try again. And you just keep trying, no matter how hard it is. So that's what I've been trying to do. And sometimes I do a great job and sometimes I do horrible and sometimes everyone else tells me I'm doing great and I feel like I'm doing horrible. I feel like I'm a horrible vlogger, <laughs> which I might be. I don't know, I'm still new to it, but I'm trying to live my life to the fullest and to do the best that I can. I'm writing this book because I want it to be published because I want people to say, you know what, her writing isn't half bad. I want the opportunity to write the great opus, the masterpiece that I want to write. And I might not be able to write it right away. I might have to write some fluffy romance novels that aren't, aren't going to be remembered in history forever. But if I can have the exposure and the, and the ability to write, maybe one day I'll get the opportunity to write my masterpiece 
Maybe someday my work will touch somebody else. Maybe in one of my fluffy romance novels, I can have one line that makes somebody think, I can be better, I can do better, or I'm strong enough to handle whatever it is I'm going through, or I deserve to be treated that well. Maybe even in a fluffy romance novel, I can inspire somebody to have a better life or to be a better person. That would be amazing, and that's why I keep trying. Because I want to help other people the way that I've been so helped by people who don't even know me, who never knew me. I will never have the opportunity to shake Pedro Moore's hand and thank him. I will never have the ability to shake Matthew Shepard's hand and say thank you. But I do thank them. And I'd like to think that wherever they are right now, they know that. And maybe, just maybe, they're smiling because somebody understood and heard them. Maybe, maybe me being so inspired by them is a good thing and maybe they would be proud of that. I'd like to think so. I don't know, maybe that's selfish and vain. Who knows? Um, but anyway, I wanted to share that. And if you don't know anything about either of them, please go and look it up. Um, Google, Wikipedia, whatever. Just learn about them.